Hey guys, in our last video, we took a look at getting a high availability Proxmox cluster set up on three Zima board 832s. And I kind of alluded in that video that my next goal was to migrate my Panda Prox, basically my, my Proxmox over on a Latte Panda, uh, all of the applications that I've got facing or for, public facing for you guys. I wanted to get those migrated over to this new cluster. And then I ran into a bit of a snag. Um, I, I, I connected my backup server to both things and tried to migrate from Pandaprox over to the cluster and then realized there's no direct migration path from LVM, which is what I used for my storage on Pandaprox, my single node setup, uh, to ZFS. There's just no direct path to do that. So I'm gonna have to do things the hard way and I wanna share that process with you so that if you run into a situation where you're migrating from LVM to ZFS, you'll have a better idea of how to do that. But before we jump into all of that, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Rise. Rise is a smart time tracking app designed to help you maximize your productivity. Now I'm someone who can look at the clock on my desktop and see what time it is, and then just a moment later, check the time again and realize that three hours have passed and I have no idea where my time has gone. Rise uses desktop and browser apps to help you track and categorize your time in a way that makes the most sense for you, customizing tracking categories and rules for apps and websites. And one of the things that I love most about Rise is that it will automatically tell me when I should get up and take a break to help prevent fatigue and burnout. Try Rise for free and help maximize your productivity. The first thousand people to check out the link in the description or use my code DBTech will get 25% off their first three months with Rise. Okay, so here we are on my Panda Prox. I'm just calling it that because that way we'll have some kind of reference between the two servers. We'll have Panda Prox and we'll have our cluster, just so we've got some names there. Uh, and here, if we take a look at the data center uh, tab up here and we come over to storage down here, storage type LVM, if we jump over to our cluster and do the same thing, storage here is ZFS, and those are not compatible. So because these two uh, file systems don't have a direct path of migration, we're gonna go ahead and do it kind of the hard way, the, the manual way, to make sure that everything gets transferred properly. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to start over here uh, on our cluster setup. I've got a template created uh, that I built that's uh, based on Debian 11. It's got Docker and Docker Compose installed on it. I've also got Portainer installed on it, as well as this part's optional, um, but I've also got a, a Cloudflare Tunnel container installed on it. So that's kind of what we're starting with. Now, there's one other thing that I had to do to make this work uh, that I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about this. What I wanna do is actually start this up. I'll give this a second to do its thing. But in order to do a remote connect from one container to another on two separate servers, on two separate IP addresses, I had to modify the uh, the SSH setup just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get logged in as root. And then what I wanna do is edit um, this SSHD config setup here. And if we scroll down, we've got this one line right here that's in white that said permit root login, yes. It didn't used to say that. In fact, yours is probably commented out with something else written there. Um, in order to make the connection, we need to make sure that permit, permit root login is set to yes. Um, and then you can do control O and enter an X like so. And then you'll wanna do uh, a service a SSHD uh, restart like so, just to make sure that that change takes effect. Now, once you've got your migration complete, you'll wanna come back into this file and, and comment out permit root login and restart the service so that you're not allowing root connections from the outside of the container. Uh, it's just one of those things I had to do for the purpose of migration. At least that's how I figured out how to do it. There may be other ways, there may be better ways. I don't know, but this is how I did it. If there are other ways, please let me know in the comments. Um, I, I, allowing root access isn't ideal, but it's what I did. So let me know if there's a better way to do that. Now, once we've got this part set up, um, now what we want to do is actually shut down this container and then duplicate it because I want to keep this container as my template so I just I can just keep reduplicating this for all of the different migrations that I'm going to have to go through. Now, while this container is shutting down, let's jump over to Pandaprox so that we can take a look. We're going to migrate dbtech.com here. Uh, that's actually uh, the website that I have up and running for, for resources, for uh, for video and that sort of thing. This is what we're going to, to move from Pandaprox over to the cluster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into here. So here we are on Pandaprox, we're in the home directory. And if I do uh, a, an LS, oops, like so, I've got a Docker folder in there. And if I change directories into Docker, 
you can see I've got applications and databases, and in there is where I've got all of my data stored for uh, for DBTech, both the application container as well as the database container. So that's kind of what we've got going on here. But what I want to do is actually go back a directory, and I want to zip um, recursively. So dash r. I'm going to do Docker dot zip. Yeah, and then I'll do um, Docker like so, and I'll hit enter. Basically, what it's going to do is take all of the files and folders in that Docker folder and compress them into a single zip file. Okay, so now that that's done, what I want to do is actually come back over to here. I want to right click this template and I want to clone it. The container ID, you can give your containers whatever IDs you'd like to. I'm just going to go with 101 because it's the next in line after the Bitwarden that I already copied. So 101 is fine. Uh, for my for my host name, I'm going to call it dbtech, like so. And I'm going to click on clone. We'll give us a couple of minutes to clone uh, the template over to the DB Tech. And then once it's done, we'll go ahead and start moving things around a little bit. So here we are several minutes later, and we can see that this 101 that we just cloned from 999 is done. It, it is ready to go. So what we're going to do is actually come over here to, uh, to resources. Uh, and we've got a, a gig of memory, a gig, a gig of swap, two cores, and 16 gigs of storage. I want to up that a little bit. So I'm going to do a volume action and resize, and I'm going to add 48 gigs to that. Oops, 48, not 487. Uh, so it'll have a total of 64 gigs of storage available for this uh, for this website. If you want a container, whatever, they're 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 synonymous for what we're doing here. So I'm going to resize the disk. Task OK. 64 gigs. Cool. So now what we want to do is uh, get the IP address of this container. So what we're going to do is start the container. So, okay, so now that this container is started, uh, what we're going to do is go to console, we're going to get logged in, and then we'll do a, uh, an IP ADDR so we can get the IP address. And here that is uh, 192.168.0.41, you can see right there. So what I want to do is do a CD space slash home and an LS. So there's nothing in the home directory right now. Let's also do a Docker, a Docker PS. Just so we can see, we've got Cloudflare, we've got Portainer. Those are the two containers that we have up and running. So with that said, let's go over to our IP address on port 9000 so that we can get logged in to this Portainer instance, because that's how we're going to initially deploy the containers so that we can overwrite them. And I'll, I'll show you what that means here in a minute. So we're going to do 192, uh, 41, port 9000. All right, so now we're going to get logged in. And again, if we come in here and look at the containers, we just have Portainer uh, and our Cloudflare uh, containers there. That's good. What we want to do though is go to stacks. We want to add a stack and we're going to call this DB tech like so. Now what we're going to do is take the, the, the Docker compose that we originally deployed with over on Pandaprox and copy and paste it into here. So here is a Pandaprox. We're on a different IP address. There's that dot 15. We're going to open this up and we can see uh, that we've got uh, a couple of different containers in here. We've got the wiki and the database, so Bookstack and the Maria database to make the containers work. So what we're going to do is come over to the editor. So this is the Docker Compose stack, whatever, that I use to deploy our Bookstack, our DB Tech website using Bookstack and a Maria database. Uh, I'm going to have to change a couple of things in here for permissions issues, but you're just going to have to trust because this is all going to be blurred. That this is what I'm copying. So I'm just going to copy. Oops, I'm just going to copy this over. Okay, so this has been copied over. So we've got a name, we've got our Docker Compose. What I want to do now is click on Deploy the Stack. And we're just going to hang out and wait a few minutes for this to deploy. Okay, so that has deployed. If we come over here and take a look at DB Tech, uh, we can actually see that the, that, that Docker Compose, that stack, whatever, also had a PHP My Admin container in there. So I'm just going to remove that. We don't need it. Uh, it was for something else that I was doing when I first deployed the container on Pandaprox. So we're going to remove that from the, uh, from the cluster here. Okay, so now that this is up and running, let's actually go back to the terminal in our cluster so that we can uh, do an ls, and there is Docker. So let's uh, let's actually clear our screen. Let's do an ls there. There's Docker. We do a cd into Docker. We've got apps and, D and dbs just like we had over here on Pandaprox, right? So there's Docker with Docker zip. So you can see that we're, we've got a couple of different things going on here, right? So let's go back oops, to our home directory and do an LS. Okay, so now we're kind of where we want to be.
So our next step will be to go back over to Portainer where we just deployed uh, the, the the blank book stack over on the, the, the cluster, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just stop these two containers. Okay, so they're both stopped now. So what I wanna do is go back to the terminal. I know we're doing a lot of back and forth here, but this is kind of the process I'm going through. I'm gonna go back to the cluster. Again, I'm gonna do an ls. There's that Docker folder. I wanna do an, uh, an rm space dash rf Docker. Okay, those folders are gone, but the containers are still registered with Docker. So now what we can do is overwrite or kind of transfer over the, the, the files and folders and everything from Pandaprox to this location. And here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna go back to Pandaprox. We're gonna do an LS just to make sure we're still there. And then we're going to do um, SCP uh, docker.zip. Uh, then we're going to do a uh, root at 192.168.0.41 colon forward slash home. And that's how we're going to transfer the file. We're going to use SCP to transfer the file, the docker.zip file from here, from Pandaprox over to the cluster node. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to ask us for a password like so. And just that fast, it transferred the file over. It was only about 45 megs or so. Now we can come back to the cluster and we can do an ls. And this time we should see a docker.zip file. And there it is. So now we can do unzip uh, docker.zip and hit enter. And now it's extracting that zip file into the Docker folder that we had just deleted. We were recreating that folder uh, with all of our information there. So we're gonna do ls like so. And there's docker and docker.zip. And if I do a cd into Docker, we've got apps and databases. So now that we've transferred our data from Pandaprox over to the over to the node over on our cluster, we can go back to the portainer where our cluster is again on on, uh, on forty one on uh, you know dot forty one for the IP address. We can start these like so, and now they're both up and running, and that's good to go. Okay, so this is the DB Tech wiki over on the Pandaprox server. And what I want to do is just kind of modify something here so that we can kind of distinguish between the two once I change the DNS over. Um, so let's go, let's go into affiliate links. Um, and then let's click on edit. Um, we're going to call this, I'm just going to, I'm going to call this uh, on Panda rocks, right? I'm going to click save the shelf. And here it is right there. There is on Pandaprox, right? We agree that that's there. So we're gonna come back over to my Cloudflare tunnels where I manage the DNS for uh, this setup. Here is .15, I'm gonna change this to 41. Okay, so that now just says 41. And if I come over to here, let's go back to there. And if we go into affiliate links, it's not there, right? That, that Pandaprox isn't there. So let's just verify that. Let's come back over to here, let's click edit. Let's change this back to 15 and click save host name. Then we'll come to come back over to here and refresh. And there's on Pandaprox. So just to make sure one last time, we're going to change this to 41 again. Save host name and refresh. And Pandaprox is gone. So, so one thing I almost forgot is we need to go back and change that permit root login setting from yes to no. So let's do that just real quick before we forget. So we're going to do... Uh, <clears throat> We do na oops, nano slash etc etc slash sh slash sshd like that, and then we want to come down to here. We want to uh, do that, or we could uh, explicitly say no. Either way is fine. We're going to do that. We're going to do Control O and Enter and Control X, and then we're going to do uh, system sshd uh, restart. Oh, service. SSHD restart like so. And now we don't have the ability to remote into that server from outside of Proxmox. So just make sure that you do that to just add a little extra security back into your configuration. Now I get to repeat that process for all of the different containers that I've got over here on Pandaprox, which is dbtech.fans, file run, lend paste, lean time, and maybe add guard. I haven't decided yet, but that's the process that I'm going to go through to migrate my LV, my, my containers that are on an LVM setup on, on a single node over to a cluster node with ZFS. So hopefully 
that makes sense. Hopefully I did a, at least a, 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 a decent job of explaining kind of the process that I went through there. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, this one was quite the, 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 the mental journey for me to figure out this morning. Uh, and I wanted to share it with you just as soon as I could. So that if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to migrate from a, a single LVM node over to a cluster of, of ZFS, hopefully this video will be helpful for you. So uh, again, thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. I really do appreciate your time and I will talk to you in the next video.